Well, the good news is that the storm wasn't as bad up at Maggie as we thought it was going to be because I, I wouldn't be here. I couldn't get off the mountain. I live about 4,000 foot elevation. I guess the bad news is in my hurry to get out here, I forgot to wolf. <laughs> uh, you know, so, no, nah, that's, that's a joke. Uh, it, it, was, it, it wasn't a joke, though, that, that she hadn't eaten in a week because I feed her once a week and I feed, <laughs> feed the wolves once a week. And it's good that they did show you the exits because if she gets loose, we'll probably clear this room, you know. Uh, actually, so, so that you can, we'll have a little more flavor to the program. I don't know why they were worried about seats because we're all going to go outside and stand in the cold and, and, and watch her, you know, do her thing. So nobody liked that. Okay, we'll, we'll leave that one alone. Yeah, uh, I am going to go get her in just a little bit. I want to talk to you a few minutes first. Uh, She'll probably lay down and go to sleep. We'll wake her up at the end of the program, uh, and we're going to have plenty of questions and answers, I hope, uh, and that's the way we all learn. But now I wanted to show you a couple of things before I get her in here. Um, got two hands, and it'll, it'll take everything to hold on to her. She's a gray-faced timber wolf. Um, in the picture, she's the one right here. Uh, I've got three of them right now, but uh, I've got one red phase and, and two gray phase. The youngest one's not that young anymore. They tend to grow up just like your children, and I kind of wish they'd stay that size sometimes. But Now, I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, we're talking about a carnivore. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank this group for letting me come back. Uh, this is the highlight of my year, and uh, I've talked with the wolves, and it's their highlight too, so <laughs> every, everything's, everything's good. They were, they were willing to come back with me. But I want to show you a couple of things talking about the predators. I, I work now uh, seasonally with the Great Smoky Mountain National Park people, um, and we've got, uh, we've got several predators up there, and I know if you've been up there any time recently, you've seen some of them. Uh, they won't let me talk about the cougar because it supposedly doesn't exist. Uh, I've, I've never taken pictures of it. Very few people have. It's called a ghost cat for a reason. Um, I've collected the scat, the, um, the tracks, or the, uh, the prints, and um, hair samples, so, and I've seen them, so I know they're here, but we won't get into that. The, uh, I want to show you something, though. If there's anything that, that biologists love to have and school teachers, science teachers, it's a skull. It tells us so much. We, we can learn about what it eats, the health of it, the age of it, and everything, too. So talking about the Great Smoky Mountains, what do you think this skull came from? Yeah. Uh, bear. Bear. She's right. It's a bear. Uh, one thing and, and, uh, that I noticed right off was that it's fairly lightweight. I mean, if you're the top predator, you don't have to be big and bad as far as being able to sustain attacks and everything. So, yeah, the bear skull is fairly lightweight compared to other ones. And I guess the thing that scares most people about predators we'll t we're talking about would be the canines or the big fangs. They're just used to grab and hold. Uh, that's good enough for the animal. It really gets in the way when it comes time to eat. Uh, a bear, too, has, uh, has the same teeth that we have, uh, much larger. But you, you remember when you were growing up, your, your parents told you to chew your food. You know, don't, don't swallow it whole, you know. Well, the bear chews his thoroughly. He has molars, and that's what these teeth are here in the side. We have flat molars. They do, too. They eat uh, mostly uh, vegetables or vegetarian-type food. Uh, probably 15% of their diet is, is meat, so they're not big meat eaters. I know they're, they're thought of that way. But, um, and I'm not going to get too much deeper in, into that, but that's a, that's a bear skull. Let me get another one here and show you very quickly. I used to open the mouth with these wolves, and I think they got tired of that. And, and uh, so I don't, I don't push that anymore. But if we could, could open her mouth, this is what she'd look like. This is a wolf, uh, uh, a uh, gray or timber wolf. A gray wolf, timber wolf, the same thing. They also have the long fangs or the canines, uh, and they do the same thing. They grab and hold. But it would be hard if you had those in the front of your mouth, and we do, they're just not that long. Uh, it would be hard to eat your food, so they eat from the side. Uh, the side teeth are called carnassials. Uh, they're very sharp. Uh, they work like scissors. Uh, when, they're, when they're eating a meal, they actually shear from the side as they eat, and then they wolf down big pieces of meat. 
and I guess that's where that term probably came from, but uh, they, uh, they have a great digestive system. It takes them probably three or four days to, to digest their food, and this one hadn't eaten in about a week, and uh, I never uh, take them to a program uh, the first couple of days after they eat because when they burp, it's bad. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be around. But at any rate, wolf skulls very hard, uh, even though they do get kicked in the head. When this one was very young, it was kicked in the head as a pup, and it bent this sagittal crest right here. So that's another neat thing that we can, we can pick up uh, as far as evidence. Well, I'm going I'm to go ahead and, and uh, bring her in. We know who you came to see, so that's good. You know, doesn't hurt my feelings at all. And once she learns to speak, uh, in public, then I won't have, have to do this. So, but if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna go out and pick her up. She's uh, she's asleep out there in the hay, and she's thoroughly enjoying it. She's the only one came dressed for the occasion. So, uh, be right back. And think of some good questions, okay? I'm getting old. I'm 74, and and I know one gentleman's gonna feed me some good questions down here, but uh, I may forget to tell you something. If I don't come back, you know what happened to me. <laughs> Get a wolf. I had to wake her up, so I apologize for to her for that. She it'll take her a little while to get acclimated here, but she loves people. And uh, again, she'll probably go to sleep, so don't be offended. But uh, this is a this is a gray phase timber wolf. Uh, she's had to stop and think. She's um, so she's six. She's probably eight years old now. They go to the vet about four times a year, so they're very healthy. Make sure of that, since we deal with the public all the time, and want to keep them uh, in top shape too. She's a female. And uh, she tops out at about 100 pounds. Uh, a lot of people say, well, she doesn't look like she weighs that much. Uh, it's hard to tell because the, the outer hairs are called guard hairs. The ones underneath are called wool. Same, same type wool that they would, yeah, there she goes. Uh, the uh, same type wool that, uh, that you would spin and weave with. Sheep have their wool, the wolves have theirs. There's no... Uh, no body odor that we can detect on a wolf, like a, a doggy smell, they don't have that. Uh, no fleas, no ticks, no hip dysplasia. These are things that, uh, especially the, the hip dysplasia, um, uh, cancer, that kind of thing, are, were you know, bred into our dogs, or they, they came along later. Uh, if, you, if you think it looks like a dog, you're correct, because all our domestic dogs came from wolves. Uh, the European wolf came over many, many years ago. Uh, we've got our, our North American wolf now, but they, they look the same. She's a canine, so she has all the habits of scratching. Uh, she's going she's gonna to act more feline than canine because uh, they do what they want to do. You can't train them. You can't tame them. Uh, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't brush her, so she just looks this way naturally. Very, very clean animals. They don't really groom themselves that much. Uh, I know it's hard for some of you to see, but when before you leave, I'm going to stand over here at the door. I want you to come by, uh, and we'll kind of do it like to do in school, kind of single file. We don't want to gang up on her, but uh, I want you to get your hands on her, smell your hand. No, no doggy odor. Uh, but that's that'll that'll be a way to get you a little closer to you, to you. Uh, also, they, they don't have, um, they don't have uh, toenails, so you don't have to clip their toenails like you do your dog. Either, either uh, your vet or you or uh, a, a handler, uh, somebody at a, a spot would have to clip your dog's toenails. If, if they don't, then they keep growing and it hurts your animal. Uh, they have claws. They're not retractable claws like a cat, but uh, they do have claws. Uh, they use them to climb with. They can climb a tree. You don't think about a wolf climbing a tree. Now, they can't climb straight up and down, but they'll climb on a 45-degree angle. Uh, they like to get up high. They like to be in, in charge. Uh, they will leave the dew claw on the front foot 
something that you don't do with your dogs, uh, especially a hunting dog. And I grew up with, grew up with bird dogs in the past. Uh, uh, if you leave the dew claw on it, they'll get it caught. It'll be torn. Well, it, it flops around. It's not attached in a dog. With the wolf, it's attached to the skeletal system. It's not an opposable thumb. They can't move it and grab stuff with it. But it's like a hook, or, or it is a claw, and they do use that to uh, to grab with. The uh, every everything on her is furred or wool uh, to keep her warm, and she was perfectly com comfortable out there, uh, except for her nose. And we can tell up around Maggie at the 4,000 foot elevation if uh, if it gets below 10, usually she'll throw her tail over her nose when when they sleep. And there are three of them that, that live together in a small pack up there. And I guess I'm number four because I'm the one who brings the food. And they, uh, they, they tolerate me. But they, uh, uh, they don't touch each other when they sleep. But they sleep close enough that they can, they can see each other. And they're facing in opposite directions. Something that, that's held over from you know, the, the wild stage. I did, did not take this animal from the wild. I didn't go down in a den and pull it out in Montana or something. I uh, knew a lady for 33 years. I've been doing this. She had, um, uh, she had wolves. Uh, she didn't sell them. She just wanted to keep them. And uh, uh, so therefore, I, she knew I'd use them for environmental ed, didn't make money off of them. Uh, it goes to pay their food bill and their vet bill, but they uh, uh, never had to pay for them. So that was a good thing too. You don't want a wolf, you may think you do as a pet, uh, especially after tonight, because she's gonna act nice for you. Uh, uh, they can get vicious with each other, not with us. But uh, they don't like four walls. They, uh, they don't like to be hemmed up or caged up, I guess you'd say. Um, they're very curious, they take things apart. They don't tear things up and shred them like your pup would do when it's playing. Uh, the uh, the wolves do take things apart. If it, I had a, I wanted to furnish them with shelter because you know we all uh, are animals. We need uh, three or four things to stay alive. And um, what are those things? What what things do we need to stay alive? Yeah. Food, water, air, and space. Food, water, and what? Air and space. Space. Yeah, see, he, he hit the one that most people don't. Food, water, shelter, and space. For some reason, people didn't think about space for a long time. And if, you're, if you deal with animals at all, if you're uh, a rancher, a farmer, whatever, uh, you know that space is a big thing. It, with wildlife, it is too. If you don't give an animal or animals enough space, then uh, disease picks up. Same thing happens in classrooms and school. Uh, you're crowded, you're overcrowded, somebody gets a cold and everybody's got it. Uh, but in wildlife, they either get sick or reproduction goes down, um, uh, death occurs and all. So space is a good thing and he's the only person that's come up with that this year. That was good, man. That was sharp. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, we take care of them. The, uh, uh, the wolves live in a, a, uh, about an acre compound. Uh, away from where I live, I can walk to it in, you know, five minutes. But I like to give them all the privacy that I can, and and let them uh, uh, let them act and react as much as they can in nature. I have to have a uh, about an eight foot heavy duty chain link fence to keep them in. They can't bite through any other type wire like welded or woven uh, dog lock wire. They can't do that, but they they spread it, and they do it enough they can escape. And that's my worst worry. Is, uh, is them escaping because they would go to somebody's backyard and want to uh, interact with the children. They love children. The mothering ability is just unreal with a wolf, uh, whether it's a male or a female, doesn't matter. But they are, they're very protective of children. Well, they go to somebody's backyard, want to play with the kids, and you know they'd be, uh, um, uh, they'd be misidentified as a, I don't want to use that bad word in here, coyote, uh, coyote, coyote, uh, that's a, you know, that's the only serial killer that we have in the animal kingdom, other than other things we don't want to mention, uh, because we shouldn't be, we are. But the, uh, the uh, coyotes do, if you have a flock of chickens, they'll take every one. If you got a, a herd of sheep or a flock of sheep, you know, they'll take every one, and they're not going to eat them. It's, I guess it's fun to them. One, uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, body language is everything, and um, 
I'll try to watch some of y'all and know when to shut up up here and leave, but uh, body language should be taught from first grade up, I, I really think, um, with the wildlife especially. Now what she's showing me or you tonight is that she trusts you. If she didn't, she'd be pacing up here. If there was somebody out there that, that was not too good a, a person, then, then she would let me know. Um, but she turned her back on you and she's trying to sleep, so what can you say? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big compliment. I have done programs uh, where uh, the animal never settles down. I usually don't know who it is, but uh, I do a lot of programs up at Catalucci Ranch, um, usually on, uh, on Friday nights up there in the summer, and we have a lot of guests come and go. Uh, one night I tried to, after a program, tried to get an animal close to an older gentleman. Usually when men get to be, I don't know, 60, 65 and on up, the wolf has a better rapport with them. I think it has something to do with hormones. They're, they're really not too comfortable around uh, maybe middle-aged young men. I don't really know why. But this was an older man that couldn't get the wolf near. Uh, this person put the wolf back in the truck at the end of the program and a lady followed me out to the truck and she said, that was my husband that you couldn't get that wolf near. I said, but it's okay. No problem. No problem. And she said, well, actually, there is a problem. I have to live with him. <laughs> said, uh, said he, uh, he's, uh, he doesn't like children. He doesn't like animals. He doesn't like neighbors. He doesn't like anybody. And, and I thought, bingo. But I, I said, but ma'am, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, they, uh, they're, they're very... Um, uh, in tune with children, I, I don't tell you anything unless it's the, the gospel truth. Nature's uh, interesting enough without uh, embellishing it. But the uh, I talked to some people from up north, uh, Minnesota, Michigan, areas like that, and every one of them has told me a story about a child that's walked away from home. Uh, the mother's busy preparing the evening meal or something, and wintertime, snowing, cold, and the, the, the preschooler gets out through the front door. And uh, uh, first thing you know, it's, it's gone. So they call the rescue people in. They look till dark and it's snowing hard and it's getting colder and they have to call it off and come back and do a, uh, uh, a recovery in the morning. They come back in the morning and here comes a little child walking in after daylight. Uh, they backtrack the child, I mean, perfectly healthy, dressed in bed clothes, how, how did it survive the night? But they backtrack the, the child uh, they find wolf prints pretty soon, wolf tracks, and then if they go far enough, they'll see where the wolves have bedded down around a child. And uh, I, I used to want to believe that was true, but I believe it is now. I've talked to too many people. So the, the big bad wolf uh, that Hollywood's perpetuating is just really not there. Um, there's really never been a, a verified attack on a human by a wolf. Uh, what was it, several months ago, less than a year ago, somebody reported one, a wolf came into a tent, I think it was on an island up north, and came into the tent, and um, um, they never did really say it attacked anybody. It was hungry, it was emaciated, it was about to starve to death, and naturally food is in a tent. Uh, bears know that too. We try to preach that up here in the Smokies, but the, uh, the wolf got in the tent, and um, uh, I'm sure got something to eat but it didn't, uh, didn't eat anybody. Now, as far as people getting hurt when that happens, I'm sure it does, because people scream and, and uh, uh, probably uh, act like prey in front of a wolf or a bear or whatever, but best thing you can do is stay calm. These guys don't like the way we smell, so in the uh, natural environment, in nature, uh, they're not gonna come near us. If you go to Yellowstone, you're going to uh, I'm keeping you awake on it. Yeah. The, uh, you go to Yellowstone, you, you probably need a ranger or a guide to see wolves. Then you have to have your telephoto lens and your binoculars and your spot and scope. Uh, and that's gonna be the best way to see them. Uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the white man, when um, our, our ancestors came over here, and mine were McGregor's out of Scotland, and I'm sure they did their part in getting rid of, the, of this wolf here, it's, it's ancestors. Um, uh, ignorance is lack of knowledge, and that's one, one reason we're here tonight to, to learn and not, uh, <coughs> not be as ignorant as, as, as some of us are. But the, um, they trap, shot, and poison the wolf, and you know they're gone. The um, red wolf, I uh, know you've heard about it, and this gentleman and I were talking about it earlier tonight. Uh, the red wolf <coughs> was, uh, used to be in the southeast. 
and it was pushed as far as it could go down to the Gulf. People went down there in, in years past and, and captured some, brought them up this way, put them in the, in the park over there in the Smokies. I uh, got to see some of them after they were released. Uh, they, were, they were catching mice beside uh, 441, the highway that goes from Cherokee to Gatlinburg. And I got to see them playing around there one night catching mice. Um, that was the last I saw of them. The pups died of parvo. The, uh, the biggest problem is, and, and uh, I'm not talking out of school because they've got brochures and literature in the park now trying to, once again, educate people. Um, if you don't have to, don't, don't bring your dog to the park. And that's any park, uh, the national parks. Uh, and I know that, that, that they're your children to, to some of you, but the, um, the problem is your, your dog's protected. The vet took good care of them, keeps them up to date on their inoculations and all. But the animals, the wildlife, uh, they're, they're not protected. And your dog's going to leave something there that the wildlife picks up on, uh, be it a, a scent or a scat or whatever. And a lot of times things are passed on to the wildlife. Well, that's what happened to the... Red wolf pups, they died of parvo, which is a virus. Um, wasn't successful there. Uh, they tried on Bull Island off of Charleston. I think that was a pretty good success. But again, I don't know whether it was real estate or whatever politics got into the, to the deal. But uh, they wound up at the Alligator Sound Refuge behind the Outer Banks. And that's where they are now. Uh, if you want to see them, I guess you better hurry because uh, there have been many articles written uh, conservation articles written in papers for years now. Um, they're on their way out. Uh, they're perfectly healthy. And talking to the to the landowners, there's really no problem. The hunters the same way. Uh, but uh, politicians have gotten hold of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I guess, and, and I'd probably be the same way, I'd like to keep my job. So I think they've gotten hold of them and put the screws to them and uh, wanting them to vote to get rid of the red wolf. Uh, that's about their last bastion up there. Um, don't know what's, what the outcome's going to be, but uh, I don't like to see politics get into anything. Uh, but that's, that's what's happening with the, with the red wolf now. You, you can keep track of it. I can't spell computer. They asked me did I need one tonight. And I wouldn't know what to do with it. But, but uh, no, I don't, I don't need it. I'm too old. But uh, I think you can look on a computer and, and follow you know, what's going on with the red wolves. You can hunt gray wolves or timber wolves uh, in a lot of states now. And if any of you hunt and go out of state to hunt, you know what you pay to get an out-of-state hunting license. Uh, besides that, you've got transportation, you've got lodging, food, a guide, everything. And, and these states make a lot of money, so there's never going to be a, uh, they're never going to outlaw hunting wolves in some states. Most of the time, in order to hunt gray wolves, timber wolves. Uh, you can't do it from the ground. They're too smart. They, they've been messed with for too many years, but it, it's e even hard to trap one. The ones that are trapped now legally, I think they're getting about $1,500 a pelt for them. So they are worth something. But the people that they go on the hunts for the timber wolf and pay a lot of money, uh, they shoot from a helicopter usually. And that's like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, not very sporting. I tell people if, if you'd like to kill a wolf, uh, you probably would like to kill a dog because there's really no difference. I mean, the wolf is not trying to attack you. You're not saving your life. Uh, it's not like you're hunting in Africa on a safari or something. But the, uh, uh, the timber wolf uh, uh, is, is, you know, meeting its demise in some states. Um, uh, Politics again, you know, trying to pull these different animals off of the uh, endangered species list. But I try to stay away from politics and those kind of things. Uh, a lot more I can tell you, but how about questions? If you got something, yeah. How long do they live? How long do they live? Okay. I like to answer a question with a question. How long, you know, I told you that they're related to dogs. And, and when I say they're related, they came from wolves. The dogs did. Uh, we don't have to talk about that E word. What's the E word? Evolution. evolution didn't happen. Now, microevolution is happening around us every day, you know, out in, in, the, in nature, uh, very small amounts. But evolution didn't happen. That, that wasn't it. It's, we, we call it adaptation. Man wanted a companion a long time ago, and, 
and the, uh, uh, the wolf was fairly available as pups. They'd come up to the campfire, they could feed them. They couldn't tame them or train them, but they, they kind of gained their confidence, and that's the way it started. Back then, it was probably uh, a little bit of selective breeding. They may have, may have found one a different color, ears were longer, tail was shorter, whatever, and that's how it got started. Nowadays, we call it um, uh, genetic engineering. So you, you, you cross two dogs and get a little foo-foo, and you got another breed. Back when I was coming along, uh, AKC, you had to, had to prove all this stuff and probably pay a little bit of money and do a lot of, a lot of research before you came up with a different breed. But at any rate, the, uh, uh, the, the wolves and, and the dogs kind of came about that way. Uh, as far as the age, um, um, how, uh, uh, how, how long do your dogs live? What's, a, what's an old dog? Yeah, and how does it live that long? What? Yeah, a lot of TLC, vet care, good food. Your animal probably doesn't have to go out and kill its food on its own and, and risk its own life and, and, and limb that way. Uh, wolves don't have that luxury. Uh, they can't get to the vet clinic. They, uh, wolves, an, an old wolf would be six and a half and they'd be gone. And primarily that's from uh, internal parasites. If you, if you look at pictures of wolves, and other than National Geographic, which is the, the best place to go for information. Um, yeah, she's covering her face up now. She's <laughs> sacking out. The uh, uh, National Geo is great, uh, but go to Walmart. That's, that's closer. And, and the, the, the wolves are all over Walmart in calendars. And that's about the easiest way to find a wolf is, is good pictures of, on a calendar. And invariably, there's going to be a one, one month during the year where you see a wolf hidden about halfway behind a tree, uh, usually an aspen out in Colorado somewhere. Beautiful shot, and if that wolf's face is half hidden, they call it half face, then that wolf thinks it's completely hidden. It'll stay there for hours and watch you and think you can't see it. But at any rate, the, uh, the wolves, you know, six and a half, um, they, they lick each other all the time. Now this one licks more than the rest of them put together. That's just her thing. It's a personality trait, just like your, your children are all different in a family. But uh, parasites are passed back and forth. Uh, another good reason that these guys go to the vet four times a year, they're, they're cleaner than I am. Uh, I think I took my pill the other day, so I don't have parasites now. But No, the, uh, that was one thing, then the next would be rabies. Uh, rabies is still out there. We don't think about it as much, just like malaria. If you don't come in contact with it, uh, you don't think about it, but there still is no cure for rabies. There's a treatment. It's about $1,500, and it's not guaranteed to save your life uh, from a, a wild animal bite or a, a dog bite. Uh, 99 times out of 100, you're going to live. Uh, they don't give the, the series of shots in your stomach anymore. They'll pop you in the arm, but it still hurts. Um, I've had semi-preventative rabies shots, and they're, they're not fun. Um, I wasn't bitten, but try to prevent it. But uh, that's another thing. Then uh, broken backs, um, crushed skulls, whatever, trying to get their food, and most of their food fights back. So it's a, it's a rough life, to, life that they live, and if they're not mature till they're three, then that's kind of a short life. I uh, wish they'd live longer. Mine will live... 10 to 12 years with, with the good care that, that we give them uh, and the vet care and all, but uh, that's still not a, a very long life. When these guys pass away, I got an old brown truck out there that's four-wheel drive and it's meant to, to haul firewood and a wolf cage and that's it. Uh, but I'll put them in the back of the truck, take them to the vet. He'll verify it wasn't a contagious disease or something and, and uh, I'll take the animal as high up in the mountains as I can go on an old logging road and take them out and there's always a pretty rock or somewhere a good view I can lay them out and say a little prayer and be gone. I think they deserve that. If that's not good enough then if I can't find a place then I park and it goes across my shoulders and we go on to the very top. Uh, I think they, they deserve that. That was a good question. Thank you. Yes. They'll feed them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they do. They eat once a week. And, and uh, if you ever want a good diet, that's a pretty good diet. Uh, same exercise every day, um, uh, same amount of sleep, 
uh, same amount of food, uh, but the once a week I think would stop a lot of us from uh, from eat, uh, from taking that diet. If most of us don't eat three or four times a day, we think we're going to die. But the uh, the wolf is set up to where it can can handle that. Um, uh, when I do a program up at Catalucci Ranch, they always feed the people. Very good meal if you want to come get a good meal up there. But uh, uh, I tell people when they eat once a week, they do something called gorging. They gorge. And that just means you eat as much as you can at one time because you don't know when you're going to get a good meal again. And usually I'll tell the people, now I watched y'all eat tonight. You gorged. Uh, <laughs> they, don't, they don't ever get to see me gorge because mine goes home with me in a little white box. So... I get paid in food, and they get paid in, in money that goes to their account in, in Waynesville. Um, mine, I, I can't feed mine uh, what they would normally eat. Now, that's another good question. What, um, um, you know, they live in a pack. A pack and a family is the same thing. If, if one wolf's going to go get a snack, now I know what you do. You go to the refrigerator or the pantry or something or go through the drive through at McDonald's. And, but if a wolf's going to get a snack, what do you think one wolf could go get on its own? Yeah. What, what do you think would be good? Yeah. Possum would be good, yeah, because he's kind of slow. And he plays dead anyway, you know, that's, that's his defense. But uh, any kind of small animal, because it's not the whole pack that's going to, to get the food. The um, uh, favorite food for them is, uh, would be rodents. Now, has anybody been to Yellowstone? Okay, I flew over it during the fire and didn't get to land. I'd like to go back sometime and, and check the wolves out. The, uh, uh, in Yellowstone years ago, some bright person... Uh, hopefully it wasn't a biologist, decided to, to get rid of the wolves, take them out of Yellowstone. Well, they did. Got them all out, and Yellowstone started dying off pretty quickly. Um, uh, the environment was just going downhill, and it's because the, uh, there were no more trees or plants growing, and the culprit were, were rodents, mice, rats, squirrels, that kind of thing, chipmunks. They, uh, things that a, that a wolf would love to, to eat as a... a uh, a daily diet, a, a quick snack. The, these small rodents were eating all the seeds, so no seeds, no trees, uh, no trees, no plants, no big animals. So it broke the food chain. That was the big problem. You don't mess with the food chain. Uh, they put the wolves back in. Everything got better right away. So that was a uh, that was an experiment or a learning thing. I hope that none of us will ever forget. Now you know we're on the food chain too. Uh, we're pretty high up. In fact, we're on the top. Now, how much do you think you're going to be missed if, if we're gone? <laughs> None. You know, I mean, everything, all God's creatures are going to get along fine and uh, uh, maybe better, you know. Uh, but, yeah, mine, I can't, I can't get enough uh, larger food for the wolves to eat on a regular diet. Now, what would a pack go after if they're going to go get big food? Yeah. The deer family, they call them ungulates or hoofed animals. Uh, deer, moose, elk, caribou, bison, uh, depending on, on where the animals are. The uh, uh, bison, we used to have woodland bison uh, in North Carolina. They were smaller than the plains bison or buffalo. Uh, they are, they're not here anymore. So they did actually get to, to kill bison at one time. Uh, but it takes a whole pack. Now, if they're going after, let's say, caribou, and these, a lot of these animals are nomadic. They travel in, in a, a circle or a circuit uh, and maybe back in one same spot once a year. It's kind of like what the wolves do. So let's say the wolves are going after a, a, a herd of caribou. Uh, a wolf can run very fast, about like a quarter horse. And I know you've got the nice horse park over here now. But they, uh, they'll run very fast, 45 miles an hour, you know, quarter of a mile. Then they have to start slowing it down. And they're known for their stamina. So the wolf pack is going to be, uh, I hate to use the word dog, they're going to be dogging the, the, the pack for uh, the uh, herd for a while. Once they finally catch them, it might take three or four days, and they're getting more hungry every day. Once they catch them, which animals do you think they're going to take out? The weak, the old like me. I see some rest of you might not make it either, but but that and the 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 term, terminally we'll see we're going to do an experiment later on. So I don't know who's the fastest runner here. We're going to find out. But no, the um, 
they'll take out the infirm, the uh, old, the weak, uh, terminally ill, and if a wolf eats an animal that's diseased, it's going to die anyway, uh, the wolf's not affected. That's a good thing. They, they, don't, they don't pass it on to the, to the wolf, so the wolf's perfectly healthy. Uh, wolves don't bury food like a big cat or like your dog does, bury a bone. They don't do that. They consume it all at one time and fairly quickly. Uh, nobody in the wolf pack starves. They take care of the old ones, uh, the pups. Um, they're well taken care of. If an animal is hurt uh, and it's going to recover, then they'll leave uh, uh, several wolves with that hurt animal and feed it and protect it until it gets back on its feet. If it's not going to recover, they walk off and leave it. And that's the, that's the way nature is, kind of the humane thing to do. Uh, most of you probably don't know, but the, the Eskimo, before they were civilized um, and, and disease was brought to them, uh, when, a, when a, a young child was born in, into the, um, to the village, they uh, usually the older one packed his gear and walked on off into the sunset. And that's just the way it was done. Um, that was acceptable. At any rate, the, uh, uh, that's, that's the way the wolves get their food. I don't have enough uh, hoofed animals around me to depend on. I did get a call for a, a, a deer roadkill the other day, the first one in many years. So they have to have something to sustain them. I have to be able to get it every week for them to feed them. Uh, my meat manager at Ingalls there in Waynesville is a bear hunter, so he's got bear dogs, and that's a big sport up there. I spend a lot of money on it. They, uh, he told me, and we consulted about it, and talked about it, so we went to the wolf section of Ingalls and, and picked a food for them that was going to be good, nutritious, affordable, and we decided it would be Tyson chicken leg quarters, the best you can get, and uh, big plump things. I mean, I don't eat that well. But uh, they'll eat uh, 10 pounds a piece uh, each time they eat, which is once a week. And you can figure about what that costs. Uh, Ingalls does help me out with that, thank, thank goodness. Uh, they're good folks. But um, uh, these guys eat 10 pounds a piece each time they eat. And that's uh, right now, that's 30 pounds a week. Um, they'll eat, them, eat it very quickly. Now, if I'm negligent and, and it's frozen, and uh, it doesn't seem to bother them at all, especially in the summer. They seem to like popsicles, you know. But they, uh, you like popsicles? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she's all right. The, uh, uh, that's, what, that's the way they eat. Uh, I'll pitch it over that eight-foot high fence because it would not be too smart to go in there and hand feed them. Uh, they're, they're serious about food. And, and I can't separate them too much because they have a, separation anxiety or whatever I guess when I do. So I have to feed them at the same rate in three spots. Everything goes well um, and, uh, and, and it comes off okay. I know uh, uh, one time, well twice, uh, I've been bitten by a wolf and it was called human stupidity. Uh, my fault, not the wolf's fault. One time I was feeding them and I had a young pup and about a year old and I thought well I got some little nuggets here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slip them to her around the gate instead of over the top of the fence. And that looked like chicken. And she nailed me. And uh, immediately after that, I mean, of course, it hurt. And I said something. And, and, and the wolf jumped back and, you know, was, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know. So they're, they're very, very smart animals. And, and I think they can read minds. But uh, that was one time. And everything looks the same. It bled out. That was good. Uh, another time I was doing a program at a Catholic retreat in Waynesville, put the animals back up. I used to take them two at a time then, and I don't now because of, of jealousy with the, with the wolves. But uh, I, put, uh, I put the young one in second. This one was already in here, uh, in the cage, and she was pulling the, the young one in there by the hind foot, and it was squealing and screaming. And uh, I was pulling it out with the lead. I never take the lead off of them because I'm afraid they'll disappear and they won't come they don't know how to come back but I pulled it out and it grabbed the first thing it could which was the fleshy part of my hand right here and put that canine in there and I thought it stayed there about three minutes it was about three seconds but yeah it hurt but immediately when she turned me loose you know it was the same thing I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that uh, so they're uh, they're good animals they're not gonna they're not gonna bite um, for any any other reason like that it was my fault 
Uh, but the, yeah, they eat the, they eat the, the Tyson chicken leg quarters, and that's what they do. Yes. How do they uh, establish the leader of the pack? How does their hierarchy work? <sighs> that was a good question. I was hoping nobody would answer that. I asked that. Uh, <laughs> it, it, is everybody familiar with the term alpha? You know, alpha. Okay. Well. Is it all? Well, hey, <laughs> same wavelength, wavelength here. I, I I hate to bring up that subject, but you know that's the only the only uh, thing that that uh, that was wasn't done correctly, I guess, in nature. But to be the the leader of a wolf pack, you have to be female. Now that was the only mistake ever made in nature, right there. You know, and and if if I do programs and and people don't uh, uh, don't understand alpha and alpha female, then I say. Some of y'all not married. I mean, come on. You, you got a girlfriend, a sister, a daughter. You, you got to know what an alpha female is. But yeah, it's uh, uh, it's it's kind of from birth. Uh, they do fight over the position you know, from time to time. <clears throat> but um, if you look at a a um, um, small pups when they they come out from underground and they are they are born underground. Sixty three days. Uh, the last week is spent. The female is underground. Has to be the alpha female. She's the only one has pups. The uh, other ones don't even seem to come in heat. It's a population control thing, I think. But they, uh, if you look at the young pups when they come outside and up top, top of the ground, there's usually one that's going to have all the bones or sticks or play toys. Uh, try to get all the meat, all the all the the food they're fed, and they're brought in food by the adults. Uh, well taken care of, but uh, usually that's the one that's going to be the alpha. She doesn't share from day one, and that, that's usually how it works out. Now, they do have uh, discussions about who's going to be the boss, but it doesn't usually work because, see, if, if you push that alpha too much, and we're talking about wolves now, we're not talking about people. Now, she'll send you packing. You'll be gone. I know what we call it, and I've been through that, but we, we, we don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to talk about that. But no, the uh, the the wolves. That's that's where the term lone wolf comes from. Uh, she'll put him up the road, and and he or she'll be gone. Usually a female because that's a wannabe alpha that's sitting back over here in the wings and and waiting to take her place. Uh, but usually the alpha female is going to have to die for that to happen. And it's not Walt Disney time, so they don't go over the ridge and meet another. Uh, lone wolf and they start a new wolf pack that doesn't, doesn't usually work that way but yeah it's it's going to have to be a, a female now there has to be I'm sure there are other instances but maybe when it is a male wolf but very rare um, there has to be an alpha male if there's an alpha female and she has all the pups uh, he's like a prince he's appointed and he doesn't really have any authority and we talk about wolves now still yeah, yeah. Same same thing yes sir Yes, to what extent are the wolves in your care interactive with you? With me, uh, I check on them about three times a day if I'm at home. If I'm working in the park, it's in the morning and in the evening. Uh, I make sure they're okay, they're healthy, they hadn't escaped and all that. And, and I do use the eight-foot heavy-duty fence, electricity at the top, turned in four feet on the bottom because they're escape artists. But I check on them. Uh, I take them food once a week. And uh, I'll go in there periodically and interact with them, play with them, I guess you'd say. But they play pretty hard. And so, they know you as opposed to another person? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, nobody sounds bad. And I'm not a hermit and a recluse and all that. But uh, nobody really comes to visit. Um, there's a young lady. She's about 40. She moved down here from Ohio. Should be here with me tonight. But she's sick. She, can't, she couldn't come. Uh, she wants to kind of take this program thing over when I'm... I'm gone, and uh, she'll probably inherit or take over the, the place where we live up there. I've got a 300-year-old uh, log cabin, 100-year-old farmhouse, and about eight and a half acres, and other than that, I don't have two nickels, but that's okay. <laughs> Social Security takes care of a lot of it, but uh, she's probably going to take over this thing. She's a good spokesperson. They know her. They really took to her right away. I think she spoiled them. They used to be the big bad wolf, but now I got this. But no, they, the, we interact that way. If I'm going to go in there and, and repair something, the electricity or something, um, or where they're digging, um, I put on uh, old uh, overalls. And they're big floppy things because when I had four wolves, and that's the most I've had at one time, 
one of them would invariably get behind me and hit me from the back and you want them to play and put me on the ground and then they all gang up on me and you could tell very readily that if they were you know after meat then yeah, I'd, I'd be gone there wouldn't be any chance but they don't do that with humans but they want to play and there were four of them so each one would grab an extremity and pull and and you know they they pull and jerk I mean it's it's bad and uh, uh, you you try to take it like a man, you know, but but you you, you want them to, want them to turn turn you loose. Uh, but that's how they play. Um, uh, I can't let them play like that, especially with a young child, because uh, they're not big enough to take it. And I'm only 165 pounds, so I'm not that big either. But but uh, yeah, they never they've never tried to hurt me. Um, they. They they know what my truck sounds like coming in. They know what my car sounds like now, and they'll they'll respond. Now if people want to know do they howl, and we're going to try an experiment in a minute. But they want to know do they howl? Um, no, they sing, and that's in in the ear of the beholder, I guess you'd say. And and I know the difference in howling and singing. Believe me, I mean uh, I've been with them 33 years, and the difference in in howling and singing is the difference in bluegrass and opera. And, and and I'm an old flat foot clogger and pick a little bit on a five string and, and, and love old time string music, mountain music. But at any rate, yeah, they, they howl, I guess, and they, they listen for the truck to come and then they don't howl at the moon when they're they're in nature out there doing their thing with the pack. It's a communication thing. They they howl or sing and usually the alpha female starts it and it'll be, you know, we're gonna gather up, we're gonna eat, we're gonna sleep, we're gonna go hunt whatever so it has to has to be a communication thing now this doesn't always work and this girl Marsha I was telling you about she she's she used to work with law enforcement canines so she's got a good background but she's got a good rapport with them she can hit whatever pitch or note it is uh, to make them sing or howl in public so I'm, what I want to try to do and usually the, the the kids do it better than us adults but we can all try I'm gonna wake her up and, and see if we can get her to, to sing for you. Uh, if she starts, then y'all be quiet. Just cut it off. And talking about cutting it off, the, the coyotes uh, up at Catalucci Ranch, when, when, they, uh, uh, when they start singing or howling out there, and they howl, believe me, they scream. Uh, sound like somebody hurting somebody. But when they, they do that, and I'm doing a program, then usually the wolf will respond back to them, and they cut it off just like that. I mean, they've never seen, smelled, or heard a wolf in their life, but somewhere in the back of that mind, they know that's their only predator. So let's see if we can get her up, and we'll talk about her name. Remind me about that in a minute. You want to get up? Yep, you want to wake up? Yep, sorry about that. Yep. Okay, and, and it may not work, but let's try it. So so uh, do your do your best, and, and it's going to get loud, but that's okay. But when she starts back, let's see if we can uh, uh, see if we can uh, cut it off. No, it's not sleep time again. Come here. I can suggest things to her, but she does what she wants to do. She's like a cat, you know. All right, when I start, y'all help me. All right, and I know this one can do it. You know. they do yeah yeah they uh they're, they're pretty cool um let me tell you about the names i think about things to tell you and we won't drag this out too much longer i know you're probably getting tired but we have us, us humans name everything uh, i mean it's good because if we didn't then 
she'd be a girl and he'd be boy and that'd be the end of it. But And in your family it's good because you don't want one, two, three, four or something. So we have to name them. Uh, they don't respond to commands or their names. So to me they're all just wolf. You know, wolf's good enough. Well, the vet didn't think that was very funny. And uh, he said, I keep legal uh, uh, medical records and said, uh, you got to come up with better than that. So we decided on wolf, same thing, but we use Native American languages or dialects. Uh, this one is wolf in Cherokee, which is Waya. Um, uh, when I do programs up there in the mountains, there's some child somewhere that's Cherokee and, and they speak Cherokee. The, the young Cherokee are going to school after school during the day, two schools, and uh, they go to an immersion school where they're learning to speak Cherokee. So now they can talk to their, their grandparents. Can't talk to their parents in Cherokee because they don't know it. Skip the generation. But this is a good thing. Uh, well, this is Waya. The, um, let's stop and think. The big red one is, uh, he's the only male I've ever had. Now this is a, a red phase timber wolf. These are gray phase timber wolves. The, uh, they come in black, but uh, uh, was never able to, to obtain a black one. The, uh, the red one is um, Delaware for wolf. Did anybody see Last of the Mohegans? And that was filmed in our uh, mountains, the North Carolina mountains up there years ago. Uh, wolf in Delaware is Mohegan. That just means last of the wolf clan. The, um, and almost every Native American nation or society has a, has a wolf clan. Cherokee have seven clans, and one of them's a wolf clan. They never worshiped the wolf. They honored the wolf because it had good family values, and that was a good thing. The small one is not small anymore. Um, she is um, uh, Lakota Sioux for wolf. And if you saw Dances with Wolves, if you watch it again and listen very carefully and rerun it, when Costner's talking to the, uh, the Native American, there's a wolf running around in the background out there, and he said, what is that? And he said, uh, skunkaha. And all these look good on paper, and they sound good when you, when you pronounce them, but the wolves don't care. They really don't. Uh, I'll, I'll find myself every once in a while talking to them and calling them by name if I can remember their name. It's kind of like ages. That doesn't matter either, but they, um, they won't respond. You know, I might as well be talking to a tree. So it doesn't do any good. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is why. Uh, another word in um, Cherokee that you need to know if you come up in the mountains um, is uh, Yona, and there's a, there's a Yona Dam, there's a Yona Mountain, there's all this stuff. Uh, that just means bear, and usually you won't hear Yona because nobody knows that word, and by that time it, bear is already there anyway, so <laughs> no problem. And the elk, you need to come see the elk. They, uh, they were put in a few years back, and they're doing, they're doing better than good. Uh, if you need a few, we can send them down here. Uh, they eat gardens, uh, nursery stock, everything. Yes, ma'am. Um, what's your name? This one? Waya. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is not really about the wolves. It's about you. How did wolves become your passion? What, um, what happened? I was raised by the wolves. <laughs> yes. You can tell, see? <laughs> now, what I try... I, I used to I used to say something I don't anymore because I don't like to see little girls cry. But there was a little this this one licks, and I I tell people there's one main rule: you don't get in their face. They're not going to bite you, but it's just a matter of courtesy. And don't get in my face; I will bite you. But the uh, this 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 thing licks all the time. And and I told one little girl at a program up in Catalucia, I said. If you do get licked in the face, I, I know you're trying not to get in its face, but she may lick you, and then you're going to look like this in the morning. And I said, that, that's bad. And she turned around and went crying to her parents. So I don't do that anymore. But um, uh, no, they, uh, uh, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good, dependable animals to work with. Yes, ma'am. Has your female wolves ever had pups, and what do you do with them? No, I never have. Uh, they, they're, they're cut. They go to the vet and taken care of. Uh, I get them at six weeks of age. I used to get them every two years because I wasn't sure how long they were going to live, uh, and I had a supplier then. But uh, they, um, uh, they don't make good pets. They don't take commands. Um, people, after you know a few months with them, 
they, they flunk out at obedience school, you know, and, and uh, the people uh, are upset and, and perturbed with them and they want to get rid of them and they're kind of like a pit bull. You can't get rid of them. Uh, and mostly, mostly what you're going to be running into are, are wolf hybrids. Uh, that kind of has to happen at a vet clinic or a kennel because they're not going to cross out there in nature. Uh, coyotes do. They're called coy dogs. They're very dangerous. Uh, but going back to that last question, I forgot something. To, I got hooked up with these things years ago. At a, I used to do some Native American dancing with the Cherokee up there when I was younger. and We went to this powwow down in Georgia, and there was a wolf pup in, in, the, in the stands up there, and it slept through all the dancing, chanting, drumming, singing, um, all the loud noises. Uh, and, and I knew it was um, it wasn't tranquilized and I asked the lady, you know, what is it? And it was a wolf pup. I got started that way. They they were shy and misunderstood. I used to be shy and misunderstood, got over the shy part, but, but I still hate to be misunderstood. You, you don't have to like what I said, but don't misunderstand me. You know. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, did you, I know, first of all, thank you for what you do. A lot of people should know more about it. Well, it's, and another thing about them being pets, their bite, their bite ratio is twice of a pit bull. You got it. They, if, you're right. If they can, and you have to remember that. I don't know if you knew Jim Bridger, but he used to run the Wolf Society. I, I was one of the people that first, the first two dogs that he had before he set them up for which gun. Oh, yeah, okay. The Yellowstone. Yeah. Uh, Cinnamon and Volta, I, I was the one that sponsored them. Wow, okay, good deal. Well, you, you too for helping getting it started. But yeah, this this bite pressure, people want to know, well, uh, how much and how does it compare? The only thing I know, and it's enough for me, they, they can crush the upper leg bone, the femur, on a, a, an elk or a moose or a caribou, something like that. And, you know, that's a, that says enough to me. I, I'm not real smart. And, and I'm a Christian, thank goodness, but I, uh, I'm not real smart, but the Lord told me if, if it was faster than me and it ate meat, then I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> you know, I, I, got a, I got a Bengal cat, but it's a house cat that's a Bengal. It's not another big one. Yeah. Are they immune to rabies? Uh, no, no, they, they, they can catch rabies. They come down with it. And that's, that's the second big killer out there in the wild. Uh, they uh, they interact. They're so close knit as a family, and and a wolf pack doesn't go fight another wolf pack. They 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 don't even think about that. Now, if it's on the border and they run into each other, you might have a skirmish. But uh, they're not a they're not a the vicious animal you've heard about. Now they're vicious because of the way they have to catch their food and they eat their food. Uh, and if you ladies went to the grocery store and there was a run on the supermarket and there was one steak left, you might be called vicious too. Because you, you're going to get that food for your family. Yes, ma'am. Do they shed in spring and summer? Yeah, good question. Do they shed? Uh, real good question. Uh, they do only for about a week. And if I'm there, and if they do shed, they don't always shed, I take a curry comb and get that wool off of them, put it in a... Uh, a clean plastic bag because no fleas, no ticks, no odor. And uh, I give it to the spinners and weavers in Asheville mm -hmm. or at the Scottish Museum in, in Franklin. And they, they like to spin and weave. They don't always shed. And that was a good question because um, I thought I had it made one time. One year it got down to minus 15 up at the house. And then uh, the next year it was minus 5. And neither year did they shed. And I thought, I'm good. I'm going on AccuWeather or something. I'm, I'm going to be on Channel 13. Uh, didn't work out too well because uh, uh, some years they don't shed. Uh, they live up there where it's cool enough and in the shade. And by the way, they have spring water uh, about, 10, about 10 gallons a minute going through their compound. So they, they got it made. They, they, they're in a good environment. A lot of shade. But uh, no, they don't, uh, they don't always shed. Kind of wish they did. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when the pups are born, how long do they stay in that pack? And when they're old enough, when do they disperse from the pack? Okay, they're going. They stay in it for life. They stay in it for life. And if they're if when they're born, and, and if they die at age six and a half in the wild, it's kind of a short life. But but they're they're there for life. They don't they don't change. They don't go from one pack to another. For one thing, they have a. I said they don't have body odor that we can detect, but uh, they have scent glands. There's one underneath their chin, 
in between their front toes and they have web front feet that act like snowshoes. Keeps them on top of the, the snow and the forest litter when they're running. There's also a scent gland at their tail about that far down you'll see a black spot. And if you look at a German Shepherd, a Husky, maybe an Akita, they have that same black spot. Those are scent glands and other wolves can detect it. So they're, they're like a, a hive of honeybees. Uh, they've got their own distinctive odor. They're not going to mistakenly get into another hive if you're a bee. They'll be killed, and, and the wolves don't, don't go off and, and intermix either. People wonder about if you got one alpha, she has all the pups. They, they worry about the genetic problem, but she's only good for about three years. So, you know, there's going to be another one. Yes? Do they uh, compete with coyotes and for territory and food? They do, yeah, they do, and, and if it's uh, the way it works in nature, uh, one pack can take care of a coyote. Uh, one wolf can't take care of one coyote. The coyote's too quick, fast, agile, and all that, and he's, he's like a fly. He's aggravating, you know, comes around and tries to steal food, and um, so the coyotes and the wolves are mortal enemies. The only, only uh, uh, enemy a coyote has to worry about so, is a wolf. But yeah, they do, uh, they do compete with food. People call all the time and say they've, they've got a picture they saw, and they know they saw a cross between a coyote and a wolf. And to put it bluntly, you know, when, when are they going to have time to have a pup? It ain't going to happen. And I get, I get snakes brought to me. They, they're pretty sure that's a cross between a timber rattler and a black snake. That doesn't happen either, you know. I mean, good Lord didn't make junk, you know, so... Uh, uh, and, yes, ma'am. This gentleman has had a yeah, yeah. Up for a long time. Yeah, excuse me, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, what's the average pack size in the nature? Always that's determined by the availability. Yeah, that, that's right. Food availability, but 25 would be good. Oh, really? Yeah, that yeah. Big? That's a big pack, yeah. Is that one, is that one of their most comfortable? They are, pack? yeah. They are, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they never seem to overpopulate. Nobody stars, nobody goes want yeah. for food. The starvation, I was, this is a, a kind of gruesome question, but yeah. in a starvation situation when you get a lot They won't that, do it. They, they don't They won't do it. No, they won't, they don't, they don't eat their own, no. Really? No, no uh, uh, cannibalism at all. Uh, and they're not going to eat a coyote either. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't, they don't have to do that, no. They just kill them and... They kill them, yeah. And they just leave them? Yeah, they yeah. That's the only that's the only thing they'll leave when they they kill it, and they don't kill just be having you know for the fun of it. They they got to be hungry. They're going to eat. Other than the coyotes. Other than the coyotes, so yeah. Kill them just for yeah, and the coyotes don't count. I had a, I had a had a, a very dear environmental friend uh, got on my case one time after a program. He said they're all God's creatures, and you need to get off that coyote kick now. And and I said yes, sir. I, I fully agree with you, but. See, the good Lord didn't put them here. Man brought them here. They're in 49 states now, other than Hawaii, and, and you know, it's our fault. Uh, we brought kudzu, wild hogs, and everything else, you know, and we, we shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. Yes, ma'am. What is the wild population of wolves in North Carolina? Or are there any that are not? Um... not uh, nothing other than the red wolf. Yeah. Red wolf, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, what are the most dangerous things for the wolf pups of the thing? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question. Man would be one, but uh, other than man, uh, they really don't have any predators. There was a there was a bear attack on a um, wolf pack out in in Yellowstone. It was documented on film, so some rangers took the pictures. Over about a week's time, there was a sow, a female bear, and and a a, a cub, a, a yearling, and they kept circling a wolf pack. And they finally got too close because they were starved to death. And, and needed food, they got too close and, and the wolves took them out, but that was very unusual. Uh, let me get one more question and we're going to wind this up. How long have you had this wolf? This wolf, I have to stop and think now. Ten, uh, no, this one's eight. This one's eight years old. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank y'all for having us. And